Hey guys, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to intentionally use your time to be the best and most productive version of you. I'm gonna talk about what I'll be doing during this winter work on a keel type of session and how I break down my day hour by hour to make sure I'm as efficient and as productive as possible. So in today's podcast, we're going to talk about setting yourself up for success. And really, this is going to be key for those who have taken some time during the winter, during the holiday break to really dive into your goals, whatever those goals may be. Now, by the time you're hearing this, it's probably mid-December, but I did something rare today and I, I took a sick day, right? I woke up, I was feeling awful. I actually went to bed feeling awful. Woke up feeling worse and I decided to, hey, cancel everything for today. Usually I try to tough it out and I try to muscle through everything and it ends up making my situation even worse. So I said, you know what? We're just gonna take a rest and relaxation type of day. And it kind of made me, it, it kind of felt like an early start to my winter holiday work on me type of phase that I go through, right? I typically go through two phases in the month of December, right? The first phase is I gain about five hours back per day, five extra hours cutting off some of the tasks. And then as we get closer to the holiday, usually about the, the week of Christmas all the way till New Year's is basically where I cut off almost everything and I have no requirements. Now, as an entrepreneur, as a trader, as a business owner, right? We know that just because we don't have to do stuff doesn't mean that we just can sit around and do nothing, right? There's stuff that we should be doing if we wanna stay on task. But the point is I have the flexibility now to use time however I want to use time. And I wanna talk about how I set up my schedule for that. I actually wanna walk you through it. I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna walk you through kind of what my ideas are. Now. Before we get into that, it's important to understand, and I think I mentioned this in two recent podcasts, that we are purposeful about our practice. We are purposeful and structured about how we use our time. One of the biggest um, obstacles, maybe not, not obstacles, not complaints, one of the biggest issues, I guess, that um, I hear from newer traders is, okay, Akil, I want to learn how to trade. There's all this stuff that I, I need to do. How do I find time to do it? It could be around family, it could be around work, it could be around hobbies. How do I carve out enough time to learn at the rate that I want to learn? Um, I also hear, or I should also say this, one of the big things we also uh, we often touch on is that when you're carving out that time and when you do delegate task, right, make sure you're doing stuff that is purposeful, right? Everything you do should be directly related to pointing you in a positive direction. So for example, just because you're listening to a podcast, not my podcast, of course, but another podcast, just because you're listening to a podcast or just because you're watching a YouTube video doesn't mean that it's pushing you in the right direction. I can't tell you how many times I've got off track watching random YouTube videos on weird stuff that doesn't really affect where I want to go in my trading, but before you know it, I, I've burnt an hour. Or same thing with with podcasts, where I'm listening to something that, you know, is it, it could be beneficial or it's interesting, but it's not really goal specific. So it, it should it's not that I shouldn't listen to it, but I should listen to it kind of on my leisure time instead of on a time that I'm supposed to be focused on doing work. So we want to make sure that our, our practices are intentional. We want to make sure that our practices are purposeful and we want to be really organized with structuring our time. And what I want to do here today, I want to take you to kind of phase two of my um, work on me session. I should probably get a better name for it. I don't know what to call it. Um, where I have all the time in the world and I need to schedule it purposefully <laughs> to do and accomplish what I want to accomplish. And the first thing I do is I, I take out a piece of paper, I load up a calendar and I go to like an, an hourly type of deal. So I have every hour written down on this piece of paper or the hourly candle uh, candle calendar view where you have every hour in front of you. Um, and the first thing I eliminate is sleep, right? So what hours am I sleeping? And again, this is going to be different for each person. I'm just going to take you through mine right now. What hours am I sleeping? Well, typically I try to be in bed by 10 o'clock, right? We're in this new phase of freedom time. I don't have any kind of things I have to do in the morning um, because my trading year is over. We're not teaching or coaching anymore. So let's be risky and let's stay up to, let's say 11. Ooh, right, 11. <laughs> and we'll sleep from 11 to say seven. Now, again, just because this time is, is blotted out doesn't mean that I have to do it. I can go to sleep at 12. I can wake up at six knowing myself I'm, not, I'm probably not going to sleep till seven. But 
it's 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 scheduled out in case I do and whatever I don't use it's bonus time that I can use for something else like you know watching random YouTube videos like I mentioned earlier so let's take away 11 to 7 for sleep that's eight hours so all of a sudden my 24 hour period of time available time has just gone down to 16 you're gonna see how quickly this goes right so it's gonna it should emphasize um, why you don't want to spend or waste time on kind of non-purposeful tasks so i just went from eight or excuse me from uh, 24 down to 16. now a few hours before bed i want to spend with my wife that's our our tv time where after the kids go to bed we watch uh, whatever we're watching we watch a movie we watch some tv show we just spend quality time with each other very important to maintain a healthy relationship that's going to be two hours um, as well so let's think to uh, take that 16 down to 14. Let's see what else is important. Um, a lunch break. A lunch break is important. I should say a lunch break and a breakfast break. So let's do a lunch and a breakfast break. Um, and let's make that two hours right there. Two hours or one hour for lunch, one hour for breakfast. Now, do I take a full hour for lunch like to actually eat? No, I'm, I'm more of a military style eater. I eat very, very fast. So I can probably be done my lunch um, within 15 minutes or maybe 30 minutes if you take, you know, making it and whatnot. Same thing with breakfast. But whatever is spared from that lunch break or breakfast break is my leisure time. And you're going to see the theme of this is making sure to schedule time where you're doing nothing, right? It's important to have nothing time because if you are, and maybe your personality will dictate this, if you are very scheduled where every single minute is purposeful and scheduled out, you're going to go insane, right? It's no different, different than, uh, you know, people that go on, they, 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 they kind of go on these diets right away where it's like, I'm just cutting out sugar right away right you're not weaning yourself all of it off of it just no sugar right away and, and what happens is you go crazy you crash and then you you find yourself uh you know waking up with a, a chocolate cake around your face because you 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 were sleep eating or something like that so make sure you schedule downtime that is extremely important to your sanity and we'll get into a little bit more of that how we'll schedule downtime within our purposeful periods as well so Two hours for food, right? Lunch and uh, breakfast. So that takes me down to, should take me down to 12, I think we're at right now. Um, workout, physical fitness, that's important for me. I'm gonna take two hours out of that as well. Um, again, I, I shouldn't go over two hours with whatever I'm doing. Some days maybe more, some days maybe less. I always like to over schedule because again, whatever I have left over is extra time that I can use for something else. So two hours for working out, that's gonna take me down to 10. Now. I want to spend about four hours with my kids, right? I got kids. I got to see them every once in a while. So four hours of strictly kid time, right? I, again, I can break these up throughout the day however I want. But four hours of strictly kid time is going to take me down to six. So I guess, well, what else do I need to do? I guess I should do... Um, business stuff yeah i do own some businesses okay business stuff let's just take an hour for business stuff let's say two hours for business stuff right uh, that's going to put me down to four so the stuff i have to do the calls i have to make there shouldn't be any meetings at the time but you you never know when you're in the real estate random things happen at random times and you know whatever um and then stuff for the trading stuff so if i'm working on any courses or i'm working on any new posts quotes of the days podcast stuff like that let, let's do two hours for business just in case and that's going to put me at four so you can see how quickly it shrunk up. So I've got four hours left to achieve my goal of actually working on myself. Crazy, right? We started at 24 hours and just getting the other stuff out of the way, right? Wife, kids, food, right? All that other stuff. I'm, already, I'm, I'm, I'm down to four hours already. So how do I want to make those four hours as intentional as possible? And, and, and I'll change how I split these up throughout the period um, and, and it could be even throughout the day but let's just say i'm going to spend one hour of just chart time when I, this is a routine that i do every single day i, I have no i, I don't want to stop it i don't want to get out the mix one hour of chart time where i'm just scrolling through charts um, during my normal trading period it may be reviewing the day and seeing what happening happens during this period because there's not going to be too much going on in the markets it could just be going to a random period on a random chart and just practicing my skill of identifying and, and making predictions Let's say I'm going to do two hours of strategy development slash backtesting, right? This is something that I want to do this um, holiday break, right? There was a strategy I've been working on for about two years now. I'd, I'd like to make some progress in that. So strategy development and or backtesting, depending on where I'm at. And then I want to do one hour of continued education. 
So that is going to be right now reading a book. Sometimes I'll take a training course. I've done that before. Um, this year it's gonna be, there's two books I wanna get through. So reading a book and then boom, that's done. Now, what's also important is within these periods, especially the, the education periods and the anything work-wise, right? Not necessarily kid-wise and, and, and food-wise, but work-wise, I wanna break those periods up as well. So I do something called the Pomodoro Technique. So if I have an hour dedicated to strategy development and back testing, um, it's, I'm just not working crazy for an hour, I'm making sure I take a break in between. So I may do 25 minutes and then I may take a five minute break, stretch, walk around, nibble on something, I don't know, um, check email, and then I'll do another 30 minutes after that, or another 25 minutes after that, excuse me, and then take another five minute break before going on to my next task. And what I found is that, you know, especially with the, the, the testing and the strategy development stuff, um, our attention span is really small as human beings. And if you work too hard for too long, um, you, the, the, the quality of what you're doing starts to fall off. And especially when it comes to strategy development, when it comes to testing, when it comes to trading, you need to be sharp as a knife. Um, because if you're missing out on something small, um, it can harm you pretty badly. I forgot this story. I was, I was talking to this, uh, this guy the other day, um, and his grandfather owned this, uh, you know, million dollar, um, company where they 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 were, they were uh infrastructure there i think they were they were building they, they built stuff right um and i think in this particular story they, they built a hospital and they built this hospital in texas and there was a beam that was used and it was like a something of a centimeter off and because someone was lazy maybe i don't know but because it was something of a centimeter off um there was a problem with the structural integrity and they had to tear the entire hospital down and reinstall a new beam. So obviously trading isn't like that, but if, if you're if you're building a strategy and you're doing all this testing and you make an error where you're reading something wrong or doing something wrong before you know it, your test results may show you one thing, but the reality may be another thing. So you don't want to have that happen to you because then you got to, you know, I guess worst case scenario is you trade it live and you start losing on your money, but um, you also don't want to go back and have to redo everything. So it's, 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 it's important that you stay sharp. So working hard for 25 minutes and then taking a five minute break to kind of relax, refresh, and then do it again, that's a very good technique. The thing about that 25 minute period as well is that it seems like a very small amount of time, right? 25 minutes seems like nothing. But remember, most of the time when we're looking at time, we're dealing with all sorts of distractions. So it's 25 minutes, but you know we're wasting time checking the phone, wasting time looking at an email, wasting time watching the news, wasting time on this website, right? We have all these other distractions. So it, it goes quickly because most of that time is actually being taken up by something else. For this 25 minute Pomodoro session, right? You wanna close out all your web browsers. You wanna put the phone on silent, put it somewhere else. It's 25 minutes of pure focusness. And I've been doing this for a couple of years now. Trust me, you can get a lot done in 25 minutes. And then you add another 25 minute period to that, in basically 50 minutes worth of time, you can get, I, I've been able to get what I, you know, what I would used to do in about two hours. Um, so it could be very, very powerful. So those are some tips um, on, on how to break down your day. Obviously, your situation is going to be different than mine. There's going to be maybe a job in there. You may have no kids. You may have this. You may have that. Um, you know, you may be going through course material and not having, you know, doing other stuff. Um, you may not work out, but you may have a hobby that you want to do. You want to keep practicing playing a guitar. Again, it doesn't matter what you do. But my advice, especially during this time of the year or really any time of the year. I just use this time because I have more time that opens up. Be intentional about how you use your time and be intentional about what you use your time for. Trust me, it's going to be a game changer. Good luck. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Remember, like, subscribe, or whatever it is you have to do wherever you listen to this podcast at. Also, if you have the ability to leave me a rating and a review, that is very helpful in showing your support for the show.